Hey there everyone, this is Samuel Johnson and welcome back to the Alien Force Retrospectives. And today we're going to be looking at episode 45 of Ben 10 Alien Force, The Final Battle, Part 1. And we open, the, and we open this episode with... on Galvin Prime, or Galvin Mark II, as Galvin Prime was destroyed in War of the Worlds. In it, we, oh, we see Azmuth in his lab, and Mayax, all the way back from Secret of the Omnitrix, and with a redesign, of course, coming in and telling him about some... Coming in and telling about an update of a recent robbery. That she says that apparently only one thing was stolen out of, in the robbery, something called an Ultimatrix. While Asmith and while Asmith is a little disheartened by this, he also says that the Ultimatrix wasn't that well, the Ultimatrix wasn't complete, and as such, they could probably just rebuild it later. But my ex also says that she, they also got video surveillance, and they also got video surveillance. So they pull up video surveillance, and they show. The halls of the lab at the, on that night, and we see a someone. We see someone, not a Galvin, what looks like a human, running through the running through the halls, and going to this and going to this chamber where we see an Omnitrix, a, an Omnitrix core. We see the person steal it, and from the back we can tell it looks a little bit like Ben. And when Asma sees it, he's actually gets scared, and it turns out that the thief was albedo all the way from good copy bad copy he is somehow escaped from prison and we see in the next scene and we see him now in a cave just working with the working on something he seems to have built a new a new man a, a new mantle or no, a cup new couple new base a new body i suppose this new this it looks like a gauntlet it's red it looks like a gauntlet it's red and so it's a, it's pretty much just the body of his Omnitrix. It look it's pretty much the body of his old Omnitrix, but it's been repurposed, redesigned. It's now bigger, and the and before I'll be and Albedo as a finishing touch put, puts the Omnitrix core in it and it turns red. And if you can't tell by now, this is the this is in fact the Ultimatrix. Albedo and pretty much Albedo is just saying yes, yes, I've done it. I've yes, I've done it. I'm going to do. I'm going to. I can. I'm free of this, and so I'll be. Of course, and Albedo starts cycling through his aliens, thinking that now he's free. But because yeah, one of the big reasons he stole the Ultimatrix was to try and was to try and get was to try and re, re, was to try and return back to his original Galvin form. But just like with his Omnitrix before, his his select his his watch is synced up is still synced up completely with Ben's as. All the aliens he has access to are all the aliens Ben has access to. He still Ben's human DNA is still the default, and as such, that means that Albedo is still stuck looking like this, and he can't turn back into a Galvin anyway because Ben because Gray Matter is locked. It's at this point that someone from the shadows comes up, and we soon learn. I'm get. I'm here. Here's my guess on how Albedo managed to get out, get out of prison. As we see that it turns out that. He's working with Vilgax, or at least Vilgax is trying to propose an alliance. Albedo's hesitant because he knows Vilgax, he's heard about him, and he knows that Vilgax is going to want to get the Omnitrix. But Vilgax assures him that he doesn't want it anymore, which, if you're a longtime Ben 10 fan, you know that's a lot of crap. But he does say he at least wants Ben dead, which is believable because he does want Ben dead. So I'll. And once and he and says and he says that it, once they get the that once they get the Omnitrix he'll give it to Albedo because Albedo says that he can use it to reset the Ultimatrix and get his and pretty much make that the original. As such, Albedo accepts this alliance, and we then cut to Ben Gwen and Kevin as they're dealing with another crisis in space. It turns out that the bounty hunter Crab, all the way back from the classic series episode Hunted, is back. He managed to kidnap Ben. Gwen and Kevin go are using ship to go rescue him, and while they and while it. It's a it's a cute little scene. It shows, but one of the things it's showing off is that Ben is being a little bit more cocky, even though he's already been ca he's just been captured. And so they managed to free Ben, and they managed to arrest Crab while at the same time destroying his ship. And they met they went and they met once they get back to Earth. Gwen, Gwen, Kevin winds up dropping Gwen off at her winds up dropping Gwen off at Julie's house with ship, and he then and so Kevin goes over to. Goes over to Ben's house so they can watch a su they can watch Sumo Slammers or specifically Sumo Slammers Hero Generation, which is pretty much their equivalent of Ben 10 Alien Force. I'm not even kidding. It's it's blatant. They say it's not as good as the original. It takes place five years later. Ish Kenko teamed up with Ishiyama. Yeah, yeah. It's if you know Ben 10, you know what they're doing. 
As such, Kevin... But Kevin gets bored by it and leaves. And as... But however, as he's leaving, he's attacked by Albedo, who goes Diamond Head, and they manage to get... But they get... And they get into a fight, and it actually is a cool... And it actually is a nice fight, but it ultimately ends with Albedo capturing Kevin and bringing him back to a cave... Bringing him back to a cave with Vilgax, but they're... Pretty much what they're do what Vilgax is saying is that if they take out Ben's allies, then Ben himself will be easy to take down. As such, when Gwen realizes that when Gwen's wondering where Kevin is because he was supposed to pick her up, she go she calls Ben, asks what's going on. He doesn't know what's go she do he doesn't know. And for first, Gwen is angry at him, and so she decides to walk home herself. But then she sees what's left of Kevin's car. She run and she finds some diamond head shards inside his car, and in which he takes away, which should be illegal because there were actually police there. Or deputies. Bottom line, she bottom line, she was taking evidence away from a crime scene. But she's also attacked by Albedo, who goes swamp fire and manages to catch her. However, at this point, and then finally, Albedo tries going after Grandpa Max, but Grandpa Max pretty much gets away as Albedo tries jumping in as Spider Monkey. Max manages to hit him with it. Ma when he tries shooting web at Max. Max manages to hit him with a frying pan, which gets stuck to Albedo's face. And while Albedo struggles to get it off, Max makes a run for it. As such. Max goes to Ben's house and tells him and lets him know that Albedo attacked him. What's going on? But at that moment, Albedo hij hijacks the, the hijacks the, the broadcast into Ben's TV and lets him know that he has Gwen and Ke Gwen and Kevin, and that if he wants to see them again, he'll go he'll go to a specific location that he sent to that he has sent the coordinates to. That he'll, he'll go to a specific location, and as he and he says he sent the coordinates to Ben's Omnitrix. Which I guess it would make sense. Their two on the tri their watches are technically connected. Maybe they could send messages. I don't know. That's enough. Ben wants to go in guns blazing. But Max says no. They have to have no. They have to have a plan. They need to think this through. They but before he but Ben manages to get away while he was t while he's monologuing, which actually leads to a funny scene. It actually is kind of funny because Max actually just appeared in Ben's room. You didn't even see him enter. And so when Ben pulls the same thing, Max says, "Oh, it's only cool when I do it. It's cute." So Ben managed to go to a mine shaft, but he know, but he's also smart enough to know that he couldn't, they can't just go right in because Max points out that Albedo knew where Ben was, so obviously this is a trap. So Ben set, so Ben goes to the, go, goes to the opening and says, "I'm not going in there." And so Albedo says, "Okay, then I'll come out." And so Albedo ends up going Humongousaur. Ben goes Humongousaur too, and of course Ben, and this is where we get another little thing. Ben thinks, of course, at first Ben thinks that the on the tricks that Albedo has is another, no, is just another knockoff. But Albedo starts talking about that apparently the Ultimatrix has some added features to it, like, and we see one of those features immediately. Apparently, the Ultimatrix has a new function that the on the tricks doesn't, namely, it can evolve the aliens into what he calls their ultimate state, which he shows off immediately as he begins fiddling with the Ultimatrix symbol on his chest, and when he slaps down on it, we see it's, uh, it sprouts four spikes and a red wave starts spreading over his body, and as it spreads, you can see Humongousaur's body is changing and altering until he be until suddenly you can it's he's transformed into something else. It still some looks close enough to Humongousaur with the same body type and everything, but now his skin is green, but now all his scales are green, he's got like a black headpiece, his chest is black, chest is black, pretty much, he has, he has got a spike at the end of his tail, and th this, it, it pretty much, it's what Albedo calls ult, the, it's, it's ultimate Humongousaur. Ben, of course, Ben at first thinks that this is a bad, that he can probably beat him, which, I, uh, which for some, but Albedo winds up proving that he actually is stronger than Ben, even though Ben could, has an, didn't actually. Even though I think if Ben actually grew, he'd be able to maybe take Albedo on at a more even level. But bottom line, we see more of Ultimate Humo that Ultimate Humongousaur is stronger than Humongousaur, and on top of that, he can shoot missiles out of his hands. He easily wipes the floor with Ben, but before he can knock him out, Al Vilgax suddenly appears out of nowhere with an army of these white rope of these weird white robots. And Vilgax says, "No, don't do it yet. We still need him." So Albedo just drops Ben, and as Ben gets up, Vilgax steps aside and reveals that the, that the robots have Gwen and Kevin all tied up. And Vilgax, and so Vilgax tells Ben that if he doesn't hand over the Omnitrix, he will kill Gwen and Kevin. Gwen and Kevin are telling him not to do it, but he he tries showing that he really he's serious as he tries to as he tries as he try almost crushes Kevin's shoulder, and so Ben pretty much concedes and says, "Okay, fine, you win." And we also we Ben we also see some more features from the Omnitrix as 
I get, like, Ben, apparently the Omnitrix has a voice command, which I suppose it makes sense, though it is a locked feature that it can only be overridden with, that can only be overridden with, it can only, that you can access with an override code. But, but, I, I, and I'm guessing Ben knew about, I'm guessing Ben learned about it off screen or something, I don't know. The bottom line, Ben active, Ben actually does remove the Omnitrix using a voice command that decouples it from his wrist, transform, and so Ben hands over the Omnitrix to Vilgax, and since Vilgax has gotten past the stupidity of Primus, he's now has, he now has the Omnitrix. He now knows how to fully use it, He's just and he's just cheering, and that's where the episode ends. And again, like with all my other two-parter reviews, I'm only going to go up to that point, because it actually is a good point to end on. Vilgax has, has gotten the Omnitrix. He not, unlike the last time he got it, he actually does know how to use it from the get-go, which he should have known anyway, but that's another episode. Any, but that's another episode that's past me. No, that's, that's past. The bottom line, it's just it actually is a good note to end on. Ben has been de Ben has been defeated. The bad guys have the bad guys won. Um, he was just beaten by a more improved version of one of his aliens. Vilgax and, and now Vilgax has gotten the Omnitrix, and he has an army of robots. At his beck and call. We don't know where these things are. We do get more history on them in the next episode. But bottom line, again, I'm not going to get into my and then my full thoughts on the final battle now. But I will openly say that. But for the first part, I like it. It's actually really nice. It actually does kind of build things up as the as it goes along, explaining plot and having some good action. They, I, I actually do. I like seeing Al, for starters. I like seeing Albedo again. He's a. I, I, I always will love Albedo most of the time. Anyway, he's a very because he's an evil double. We can see. I like that we also got that we also get to see him kind of in power again. I like seeing how I like seeing the fights between him and Gwen. I like between him, Gwen, and Kevin as that actually is nice and showcases the strengths of all three of them. It's cool seeing him actually teaming up with Vilgax, though I will openly admit that he probably should be smart enough to know that Vilgax is most likely playing him. It's still not... It is cool to see all this build up, and even just kind of seeing that Albedo is stronger than Ben now with the uh, with the added might of the Ultimatrix. And I'm not going to talk about the Ultimatrix until the second part, because I will... Because as... It's part of my it's part of my kind of my final thoughts on it is it, it, the Ultimatrix does kind of play into all of this, but I will openly say that I like the ultimate that for what it is, I do actually like the ultimate feature. It was some it was like kind of big kind of a bit of a spoiler for this one, but uh, well not really much of a spoiler, but anyway, the, this episode was uh, the final the, the finale of Ben 10 Alien Force was not just meant to be a, a finale for the show, but also lead into the next show, Ben 10 Ultimate Alien and I think, and I may be, I think I'm, I might be, I could be wrong, but I'm, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. I think, the, I think the ultimate transformations are introduced just to be able to sell more toys. Like, oh, look at this. You got improved, more powerful versions of aliens. And I will probably, and I admit that's probably what it was, but I will give it this. If they're cool. I really do like them. They're like, they're distinct enough from the original that they look that they're kind of different, but they but they're close enough so they're recognizable. Like for starters, let's go with the let's go with who, the with the ultimate alien we see in this episode, Ultimate Humongousaur. But his body is exact. His body is close enough to Humongousaur so that you can tell he so that you can so that if someone said that he was Humongousaur, you could you could probably buy it. And on top of that, but on but he's also but and he does have and his powers are close enough, but there are notable improvements because of it. Because at base level, his size is now larger, his strength is now increased, he can shoot missiles out of his hands, he can jump higher, he's actually he's actually a match for Humongousaur when he's smaller, though I still think Humongousaur could probably take him if he got bigger. But it actually is, it actually is a, and I, like, I think it's a cool design, and I think, I will openly admit that he's probably not my favorite out of the Ultimate Transformations, but that's another day, and I'm probably not going to be talking about all of them. You'll find out later. But bottom line, I do, I think it's a nice idea, and I like seeing that. And again, the, per, the first part of this episode does kind of build it up on, just kind of does build up what's going on, including with Ben's arrogance. And while I'm talking about that, I kind of want to talk. Eh, actually, I kind of want to get into that in the second part because that does pay off there. But eh, bottom line, just I I know I'm not really getting into too much for this week because again, it's a two parter. I want to sum up my thoughts all together. But for what it is, I do like it. I do like seeing Albedo again. I like seeing him teaming up with Vilgax, and I like seeing Vilgax not being stupid, for one thing. 
Yeah, it's the, yeah, it kind of is. It is kind of perfectly clear that he's obviously lying to Albedo. But it is nice to actually see him kind of do, being more active, be actually being kind of more subtle planner, doing all this, not doing all this stuff. It's kind, it is nice. Again, the fight scenes are still fun, are still nice. And oh, there is something I would like to talk about actually. I mentioned it's kind, and it has to do with Albedo. This and this is kind of something that again, it's a little nitpick. I mentioned before how in Primus when. We saw when Azimuth and Vilgax had the Omnitrix, their aliens didn't look any different from Ben's aside from their voices. It's a similar case to Albedo. And when it comes to Albedo, I honestly wouldn't care as much because since his normal form is does look like Ben's except with the colors rearranged, I would be openly okay. I would It would make sense that all of his aliens would look like Ben's. But again, the colors are off for Albedo. His skin is the same, but his hair is white, his eyes are red, his jacket's wrong. He does look like Ben, but he's like almost a photo. But he's almost a photo negative. Not exactly, but almost. So, it should probably make. So, in my opinion, that thing that I think that would, the distinction would probably extend to his aliens as well, but it doesn't. At most, we only at most the only things that are different are that his eyes and his sim and his Ultimatrix symbol are red instead of green. Beyond that, they look exactly the same as Ben's aliens and. It's not something too big, but it did annoy. But it did annoy me when I was a kid. It still kind of, and it still kind of gets under my skin a little, even though I'm even not even now when I'm older. And it is something that I actually am glad they kind of fixed in Omniverse. That when I'll like in Omni, like going back to kind of I'm kind of spoiling this a little. In Omniverse, we see Albedo again. He does find a, and of course he still can transform. And all of his aliens do look exactly like Ben's, but the colors are fit. But the colors are more faded. They're more. They're off, they're off more red. Or they're more red or whatever. It's it's di and again, it may not be exactly what I wanted, but it is nice to see some distinction between his aliens and Ben's beyond red eyes and a red symbol. But again, that's a nitpick. Alt but that's a nitpick. Bottom line, though, I there are some things that I don't want to fully talk about till part two because it's all one big part. But on the whole, for the first part of this two-parter, it it does well in setting up the action and it, it and it does end on a nice cliffhanger. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for watching. I'm Samuel Johnson, and tune in next week where we look at the final episode of Ben 10 Alien Force. See you then.